Right, so that debate is still ongoing in Parliament, and joining us right now is correspondent uh, Chrissy Parker Wilson. Hello, uh, uh, Parker. So I can understand the debate has been going on for a while now, and it's going to go on for a while longer. But where are we in the debate at the moment, or what else has come up in the debate? Well, so what has come up is about how government manage the banking sector crisis. With the minority believe that that was poorly managed and also has contributed to the mess we are currently going through. The majority on the other side consistently across board, I mean, all the members of the majority side who have contributed to the debates this evening have insisted that the NPP government is the government that has revived the economy and has taken it on a sound footing, considering what the NDC administration did at the time. The deputy majority leader, Afanyo Makin, uh, shortly after Dr. Kisela Tufosun spoke, indicated that, well, uh, he had to force him, she did call share some of the blame because he was a deputy finance minister at the time. And so he was claiming that the country is currently on its knees in terms of our economy, then the John Mahama administration, uh, which he was a part of it, should he call it, take the blame. But he is convinced, that is a, a fair marking, that the NPP government has indeed made the economy better. And that is why they christened the budget where you were here, meaning we are moving forward. So for them, they have consistently talked about uh, them being the best managers of the public press and the economy. Whereas the minority side, in fact, John J. Napoleon, when he was speaking, uh, said that they were going to haul the Bank of Ghana boss uh, before the House, uh, basically because of his involvement in the banking sector cleanup. Um, Eric Opoku, uh, the member of parliament as well for Isnafu South, uh, made the point about Greg and the fact that uh, ever since the NPP administration took over, the agri sector has seen some sharp decline, and the, all the talk about the planting for food and jobs has not really yielded much result and, and has not contributed meaningfully or significantly uh, to, 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 to the economy. And so the fiscal deficit has been the central conversation uh, for today's debate. All right. And uh, one other thing that has come up uh, in Parliament today is the what you can say is a veiled threat from the speaker to the presidency that they would have to the presidency would have to approve the budgetary request that it has put through as well as that of the judiciary what has been the posturing or has there been any reaction from the majority yeah there's a reaction but israel you recall that when the uh, speaker was helping the new members of parliament go through the orientation and he was clear in his mind that his leadership or parliament will not be a footnote to the executive. And so uh, he consistently has made the point that this is the time for parliament to really realize itself and take a rightful position in terms of governance. Because parliament is not an agency or a ministry, but rather an arm of government. And so must be accorded the needed respect. Now, before we commence the business of the day, that is the debate, uh, he read the official communication which he took the bar, that yes, the president has sent a, a, sent a communication to the House indicating that they have slashed their budgets. I'm talking about parliament and that of the judiciary as well. But Israel, you remember that uh, last Friday, uh, shortly after the majority leader uh, presented the budget to the House, uh, the speaker asked him to inform the president that at least they should make sure that the allocation given to a parliament is the best or has been increased because consistently uh, he's seen some reduction there. And so uh, the letter by Asante Bedir to which the Speaker of Parliament read was actually a response to the request he made. Now, after reading the communication, which has stated that because of COVID-19 pandemic, uh, they cannot uh, grant the request by the House. And for that reason, the allocation has been slashed. The speaker said he wouldn't entertain that. And as a matter of fact, he's asked the committee in charge of that to go back and review it. Now, his argument is that uh, the president or the presidency does not have the power to review the budget allocation for members of parliament and also the legislature. 
uh, I mean, that is sharing. Uh, he quoted uh, an article to back that uh, uh, argument. And so uh, he's asking the committee members that they have the, 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 the right and the power uh, to review or a revision of the allocation. So they should go and do that and come back to report to him. If they fail to do that, he would not submit the usual report to the president that the House has approved the budget. And so that letter has been sent to the Jubilee House. We expect uh, a response from the presidency. And let me say that the letter, as we received, was signed by the executive secretary to the president, Asante Bediatio, communicating to the House that they have slashed their budget allocation and that of the judiciary as well. So uh, that is what happened. Now, with the majority, they didn't really have much to say. Asante Chimisa Bonsu at the time was a bit... Uh, lost in the conversation uh, because he didn't understand what was going on. And the point, the member of parliament for South Town constituency, uh, someone, someone who you Blaka, made was that, well, at the time he was, he was, he was all soaked in uh, being a finance minister, so he didn't really listen to the speaker. But the speaker gave a directive, and that is why uh, they are here today they're talking about that. So they said, well, they're taking that in their strides, and they will communicate that to the presidency. The minority leader, Haru Naidrisu, actually commended the speaker for taking a bold and a firm decision to defend parliament. He believes that with this kind of leadership, definitely parliament will take a rightful position as we go forward. All right, thank you very much, uh, Chrissy Packer-Wilson, bringing us that update from parliament. You're watching Joy News Prime.